Gentlemen, tell me something. How do you feel about zombie media? Do you mean like World War Z and the Walking Dead classics, but the zombie genre was used way too much in the last decade? The only zombie game I like is The Last of Us. Actually, the infected in The Last of Us aren't zombies. They're still living creatures that have been infected by the fungus. No shot, you just, um, actually me about The Last of Us zombies. Okay, and we're already off to a great start. Listen, I called you here today because I wanted to talk about Telltale's The Walking Dead game. Oh, that's a classic. Been a long time since I've played it, but I remember it fondly. Well, good. Here's a tier list with the characters we run into in the game. Who is in this list exactly? All the playable characters, and with them, will come major and minor named characters that we speak to, and the various antagonists throughout the game. Sounds good. Who do we have up first? First up, we've got Sean and Herschel Green. Sean was a good kid that met a pretty unfortunate end at his farm thanks to Kenny's son messing around on the tractor. Didn't care much for the old man. I swear I was so nice to him, and he up and told me I need to watch my attitude. Screw you, old man. It means you probably weren't consistent in telling him the truth somewhere along the line, but it doesn't matter much. The Greens aren't around long enough, so let's put both of them C tier and move on to Andre a police officer you meet if you choose to leave Clementine's house at night. I don't know who that is, to be honest. Seeing Andre means you had to let Chet die during episode one. Screw that, Chet is the goat. Put Andre in, who cares? Now we have Chet. This is Sean's best friend who you'll meet if you leave Clementine's house during the day. Real talk, do we want to lean into the Chet memes or do we want to actually rank him? We already did this with Jenkins. Probably better to play this one straight. All right, Chet is going to C tier. He is at least memorable enough that people memed him. Plus, Herschel liked him so much that his death will make him open up to the idea of fortifying the farm. Now we'll start with the members of the motel group. How do you boys feel about Kenny's son, Duck? Annoying brat, he kills Sean Green on Herschel's farm and he's just too loud. He's a kid, Donald, and Duck is mostly well behaved. Duck got massive points from me in episode three of season one when he worked as Lee's sidekick while we were trying to track down the missing supplies. I'm Batman and he's Dick Grayson, our ward. All that nerd comic book BS isn't making me like that kid and his dumb smile. Duck is decent, and he was a good friend to Clementine. He can be irritating, but he's a child, so we'll put him in C tier, a perfectly mid-character who was short-lived but memorable all the same. Next up is Duck's mom and Kenny's wife, Katja. Hmm, that accent of hers got me about to act up. Kat operates as the medic for the motel group since she was a veterinarian. She's easily the kindest and least offensive member of the motel group, acting as something of a moral compass for Kenny and Lee. Unfortunately, Katja's kind heart wasn't meant to survive long into the apocalypse. When Duck is bitten and begins to turn, Katja isn't able to cope with that reality and ejects herself from life instead of being forced to kill her own son. Put her in B tier, she might not be around much, but she's easily one of the best characters in season one and her death is arguably the first emotional impact of the series. Next up, we have Glenn. This is a character from the Walking Dead comics. And while we're on the topic, we'll only be judging these characters based on their appearance in Telltale series and not across the Walking Dead franchise as a whole. Decent guy, unlike Lily and Larry. Glenn was willing to come out and save Lee's group when they were surrounded by walkers. Too bad Glenn is a giant simp. He makes Lee and Carly waste time at the motel to save some girl trapped in an apartment just for us to find she's already bitten. Or maybe Glenn is a nice guy who hasn't lost all his humanity this early in the apocalypse. In Donald's defense, Glenn is immediately disappointed upon learning that Irene has, or rather had, a boyfriend. His intentions here were clear as day. Glenn will take issue with Lee if you allow Irene to unalive herself, claiming that you can't give up hope. I don't know about you two boys, but the zombie apocalypse ain't it for me. Well, I'm in the White House. I'll survive just fine. I'll be out in the field slaughtering walkers with my bare hands. In the end, Glenn will depart from the group when we set up shop at the motel, aiming to get back to Atlanta to save his friends, an inoffensive character who is only with us for a short time. So we'll put Glenn in C tier. And I suppose we'll mention that Glenn is a fantastic character in The Walking Dead show, which is no doubt why Telltale chose him of all characters to tie in to hype up the game. It fits C tier for Cuck. Being a simp never harmed anyone, Donald. Gentlemen, who do you save, Carly or Doug? Doug, of course. Carly, obviously. No shot you just got on Glenn's case for being about the ladies, and then you pick Carly over Doug. First of all, I'm not even into Carly like that. Lily is more my type. Second of all, Carly demonstrates that she knows how to fire a gun, making her far more useful than that geek Doug. Bro, Carly is so dumb she couldn't even figure out how to get a radio working. Homegirl was messing with the damn thing, and it didn't have any batteries in it. So what? You don't need to be smart to fire a gun. What good is Doug if he can't even shoot a walker? 
Doug is an IT technician. He uses his smarts to program a remote to activate the TVs across from the Everett Pharmacy. And he creates an alarm system that warns the motel group of walkers and bandits. I'm not surprised you picked Doug, Joe. You like boring ass Caden Alenko, and you like boring ass Doug. Both Doug and Carly have their merits, but if you pick Doug, Lee will not be able to tell everyone that he's a convicted murderer. This can create some tension with Kenny, but as you know, with most telltale decisions, it hardly matters. I say we put both of these characters in B tier. Doug is a good friend to Lee who acts as a little comedic relief in an otherwise pretty depressing setting. Carly is trusting of Lee despite knowing he's a murderer and even develops a little crush on him. Both characters either die in the pharmacy or Lily kills them in episode three. Worth pointing out that Lily intentionally kills Carly but accidentally kills Doug who is attempting to save Ben, Lily's intended victim. Now we have Lily's father, Larry. He's one of my worst nightmares, a combination of Joe and Donald, an old and loud pain in the ass. Oh, so that's how you feel, Barry, after all these years? You're getting a little overconfident there, Barack. You're not exactly a spring chicken yourself. You might be the only man of color in the country proving that black does, in fact, start to crack. Well, with you two as my successors, it's no wonder all this stress and constant disappointment is aging me. Anyway, Larry is a spiteful and irritable old fart who didn't hesitate to say we should throw Duck out into the walkers at the start of episode one. All of that while having a serious heart condition that arguably makes Larry a bigger liability than both of the little kids. Old bastard punches Lee and tries to leave us to the walkers, bitches and moans if he doesn't get food in episode two and then spends most of the time flirting with Brenda St. John while Lee and Kenny are getting to the bottom of things. In the end, Larry has a heart attack and Kenny and potentially Lee will smash his head in using a salt lick. Though it is possible that Lily would have been able to resuscitate him regardless, D-tier character. Next up we have Mark, a survivor from the US Air Force. He shows up with a bunch of commissary food, which is how he gets into the motel group. For how little time he was around, Mark was a pretty good guy, having Lee's back all the way to the end. Mark is just that guy. Even when he had his legs chopped off and turned into a walker, Mark pulled up to help Lee save Katya from Brenda, put him in B-tier, Mark was a bro even beyond death. Now we've got Ben Paul, a high schooler we meet in the woods at the start of episode two. That goddamn shit bird screwed everything up. He gave supplies to bandits, he got Duck and Katja killed, and he pulled that goddamn hatchet out of the door and let walkers into the school in Crawford. I get the feeling Donald isn't a big fan of Ben. Okay, let's settle down. Is Ben a walking, talking liability? Yes, but things are a bit more complicated than that. Ben's deal with the bandits actually bought the motel group some time, as Kenny tells us. The bandits had been attacking for weeks. That's true. Ben's mistake was not necessarily giving the bandits supplies, rather not going to Lee and telling him about it. Ben's problem was a lack of communication. I will admit that there's no defending him pulling the hatchet that was keeping the walkers out, though. Bro couldn't just leave shit alone. Justify all his screw-ups all you want. Ben should go in F tier for f***ing everything up. I don't agree. Ben isn't a child, but he is still a teenager who saw his classmates and teachers get devoured by walkers. He has no idea what happened to his family either. He made some mistakes, but who wouldn't in this situation? I also got to give Ben some props for finally standing up to Kenny if he survives to episode five. His voice was cracking, but he stood his ground like a man. In the end, Lee can either drop Ben, leaving him to be killed by walkers, or he'll survive until episode five, where he'll take fatal damage and be mercy killed by Kenny. Put Ben in B tier, he's a well-written and realistic character. B tier is way too high. I can be talked into a D tier, but B is crazy. We'll even out to a C tier. Ben is a perfectly mid character. We've concluded the main members of the motel group. If you're wondering why we haven't covered Lee, Clementine, Kenny, and Lily, it's because we believe it's better to rank them at a later point. So now we'll move on to the St. John's. It took three months for this family to start cooking and eating people when they have a whole ass cow they could have eaten first. You can't convince me that the younger brother, Danny, wasn't already kind of screwed up before the apocalypse began. Dan definitely takes way too much joy in killing and eating people, even suggesting that Lee keep him alive so his meat doesn't get tainted. Andrew, the elder brother, is a bit more easygoing by comparison, but that makes him worse in my eyes. What kind of man can wear such a soft smile knowing full well that Mark is being hacked apart to be served for dinner? I was kind of sweet on Brenda right up until we got to the part where she butchers people for dinner. In the end, the St. John's all die on their farm. Danny falls into his own bear trap and is either killed by Lee or potentially left to be eaten by walkers. It's also possible that Lily might kill him, but that's unconfirmed. Brenda will take Katja hostage, but as we said before, Walker Mark will pull up and kill her. Lastly, Andy will fight Lee ending when Lee either shoots him, kicks him into the electric fence, or leaves him to likely be eaten by walkers. 
with Walker Brenda probably getting to him first. I say we put the St. John's in I'd rather be with the Walkers. At least when the damn zombies eat us, it's because they don't know any better. This family of freaks knows what they've done. There is one more character to cover from the farm. We have Maybell the cow. She's an animal, she's goaded, and it's a shame we had to leave her behind in the farm. I choose to head cannon that Walker's never found her, and she lived out the rest of her days on the farm. Agreed, putting Maybell in the animal tier. Next up is Chuck, or Charles if you're feeling fancy. He's a man we meet living inside a train on our way to Savannah. Chuck is the mother fucking goat. Episode three was a nonstop stream of awful things happening and Chuck pulls up with his guitar and lightens the mood. And of course we can't forget that Chuck is the guy who got Lee to take things seriously. Clementine and Lee were headed towards a tragic finale. So Chuck told Lee to come up with a plan, cut Clementine's hair and teach her how to shoot. Chuck might be one of the most impactful characters in the series for that reason. This is where Clementine gets her iconic hairstyle and teaching her how to shoot a gun is a highly unforgettable moment. Both those things came from Chuck. Chuck meets his end at the beginning of episode four when walkers have the group boxed in. And when Ben leaves Clementine alone, Chuck rushes over to save her. He's last seen battling off the walkers with his trusty shovel. Unfortunately, we come across Chuck's corpse in the sewers of Savannah. A tier character, I don't care that he's only around for about one episode's length of time. Chuck's importance to the series can't be overstated. Absolutely, Donald. Without Chuck, I doubt Clementine would have even made it out of Savannah on her own at the end of the season. An obvious A tier. Now we move on to Krista and her boyfriend, Omid, whom we meet in episode three of season one. I love Omid. He's such an unserious guy and brings some more lighthearted humor. He also shares an interest in Civil War history with Lee. Pushing him off the bridge was pretty hilarious. Bro did not stick the landing. Unfortunately, Omid meets his end at the start of season two when he is accidentally killed by a scavenger. Then there's Krista, who's a pretty decent character. She approves of us teaching Clementine how to shoot. She can come off a bit strong, but she means well. One thing Krista absolutely deserves credit for is taking care of Clementine for 16 months after Omid was killed. Even after losing her baby, she still kept Clem safe, even while she was clearly depressed. Clementine ends up being separated from Krista at the start of season two when some bandits attack. And you know what I'm sick of wondering? Telltale Games, I know you managed to come back after being closed down. Tell us where Krista is. I'm no longer asking peacefully. Donald, put that down. Who let him have a gun? This is America. There are more guns than people. Hopefully someone at Telltale will let us know what exactly Krista's status is but we'll put both her and Omid in B tier. They're enjoyable characters who stepped up to take care of Clementine at the end of season one, and Krista cared for her for longer than anyone else. We're moving on to Molly, the badass survivor we meet in Savannah. Molly is so cool, she should go right into S tier. Do you think being competent makes for a good character? Molly is bland as hell. Her I'm so cool act isn't working on me. Molly has an interesting background. She's from Crawford, a place that didn't allow the sick, old, and young. Molly has a diabetic little sister, and she's forced to use her body to get medication for her. However, the doctor gets cold feet and ends the deal. Molly's sister is discovered and taken away. We can only assume the worst outcome. In the end, Molly left Crawford, which is why we find her scavenging alone in Savannah. I agree with Joe, though. S tier is way too high. I'd put her in B tier. C tier, Molly is mid. Her ice pick Hilda is cooler than she is. Molly doesn't even stick around in the end dipping after we secure everything we need for Kenny's boat. Joe, you only hate Molly because you can't get past her QTE event during episode four. We're putting Molly in B tier. I think that's perfectly fine for such a short-lived character. And now we're moving on to Vernon and his group of cancer survivors that Lee runs into in the sewers of Savannah. Vernon is a piece of trash. He and the rest of those people with him steal our boat just to fail to utilize it. That motherfucker is lucky he died off screen because if he were alive, I'd feed him to some walkers slowly. We're putting Vernon in F tier for completely screwing us in Savannah. What about Bree? She helps us get into the school in Crawford. Who cares? And the rest of Vernon's patients? Throw each one of those old farts in F tier for being accomplices in stealing our boat. Good deal, now we're nearing the end here. Let's talk about The Stranger, the central antagonist of season one. This was an interesting twist. The Stranger is not a cannibal bandit or some other kind of sick freak like all of the other people Lee has run into throughout the season. He's a guy that we wronged by taking his supplies. The Stranger was just a father of two who coached Little League. He lost his son on a hunting trip, and then his wife and daughter left after we took their food. They didn't get far before the stranger found them as walkers. The conversation Lee has with him is chilling. 
His dialogue is arguably the best in the series. And having said all that, there's nothing more satisfying than either choking him out ourselves or having Clementine deliver the killing blow. The stranger is going in A tier. It's true that he's a piece of garbage that lured Clem away from us and a freak that keeps his wife's severed head in a bag, but he's easily the best antagonist the game series has to offer. And now we have the GOAT himself, Lee Everett, the player character for season one. Lee is simply that guy. You can play him in a variety of ways. He might be more peaceful or you can make him violent. But either way, he puts Clementine first. Lee has cemented himself as one of the greatest protagonists in gaming history. His development from only viewing Clem as a kid that he happened to pick up to treating her as his daughter was heartwarming. Without Lee, Clem wouldn't be where she is in season four. Lee's death at the end of the season is one of the few times in my life I have genuinely cried because of a fictional character. Despite being bit and constantly either passing out or cutting his arm off, Lee is focused on one thing, saving Clem. Even I shed a tear for Lee, and seeing him rip and tear through a bunch of walkers in episode five is a highly unforgettable moment. This is an obvious S plus tier. I think we all knew this one by default. Damn straight, Lee goes to S plus tier. Rest in peace, my brother. All the work you did for Clem will not be forgotten. Now we move on from season one and hit up the 400 days short story, which ties into season two. Rapid fire these, only like one of these characters ends up mattering in season two. How do you guys feel about Vince? First thing we see him do is smoke a guy for messing with his brother. He doesn't get away with it though. Too bad Vince is a giant snitch. If he catches Tavia smoking in season two, he'll go tell Carver. D tier for being a narc. And what about the two guys Vince has sitting next to him, Justin and Danny? Well, Justin is a con man for making a hundred million doing some fake ass pyramid scheme. That's a W in my book. No harm in separating a bunch of fools from their money. I sure wish someone would take all of your money. Justin isn't really worth a damn, so we'll put him in who cares. And what about Danny? Ain't he convicted of some kind of sexual assault potentially involving a minor? Say less, I'd rather be with the walkers it is. Not surprising given that he has the same first name as Danny St. John. Now we got Wyatt and Eddie, two stoners who are on the run from a guy in a pickup truck. Wyatt is just a sarcastic guy who doesn't get much change in season two D tier. Eddie, on the other hand, has a bit of a glow up. After he either abandons Wyatt or is abandoned by Wyatt, he's seen at the McCarroll Ranch defending children against an assault. It's unfortunate that Eddie came across Clementine on her crusade to rescue Alvin Jr. He thinks she's another raider, and Clementine is forced to defend herself by killing Eddie. An irresponsible stoner who grew up into a caretaker, pretty good development for a character who we don't see for three entire seasons, put Eddie in B tier. Now we have Russell and Nate. Russell is a good kid who has the unfortunate displeasure of meeting up with Nate, who is the man in the pickup that chases after Wyatt and Eddie. Nate isn't that bad. He's a prankster who likes to rank female walkers on attractiveness. That MF Nate plays too much for me, he's going into F tier. Russell, on the other hand, is easily the hardest of the 400 days protagonist to convince to leave with Tavia, likely because Nate's weird ass made him afraid of strangers. Russell goes in D tier with the rest of them. Unfortunately, these protagonists didn't get a lot of screen time. Now we're going to jump to Shell and her sister, Becca. Shell is boring and Becca is annoying. Tell us how you really feel, Donald. What do you want me to say? At least Vince, Wyatt, and Russell had some funny gags put both Shell and her sister in, who cares? I think that's a bit harsh. Shell is a protagonist, after all. We'll put her in D tier. Okay, fine, but look me in the eye and tell me you care about Becca. I would be lying if I said I did. Exactly, you know what to do, Barack. And go ahead and throw Roman and Stephanie in there, too. The creator himself almost forgot these two were characters. Yep, and now we move on to our final protagonist of the 400 days, Bonnie. Bonnie is the only one who has a somewhat important role later on. It's just too bad her role is to be a complete fuck up. No kidding. Bonnie, you stupid idiot, you had one job and it was to cover Luke while he pulled himself out of the ice. But no, you had to go walking over to him, causing you both to fall through and die. And Bonnie has the nerve to get angry with Clementine for doing the correct thing and letting Luke save himself while we kept the walkers off him. Yeah, Bonnie killed Luke and damn near killed Clementine on that frozen lake and you can't convince me of otherwise. And after all that, if Bonnie lives, she will join Arvo and Mike in stealing supplies from Clem, Jane, Kenny, and Alvin Jr. Trash character, I don't care how sad her background is and how nice she is to Clementine. She completely undid any goodwill she could have had by the end of it all. Hell, she's the one who betrayed Walt's kindness and lured Carver to the ski lodge, which got Walt and potentially Alvin Sr. killed. Not to mention that Bonnie has exactly zero fashion sense, giving Clem that dripless ass jacket in season two. Putting Bonnie in F tier, 
She would have literally been higher ranked if she had a background role like the rest of the 400 Days protagonists. Didn't Bonnie's story have a few other people with her? You're talking about Leland and Dee? Dee, I don't remember any Dee. Dee's nuts, ha ha. Bro, for real? Put both of them in who cares. That Dee's nuts joke is about all we have to say about them. Now we round things out with Tavia. She's the survivor from Carver's settlement that recruits the 400 Days protagonists. She definitely wears a pretty kind face when we meet during the DLC because in season two, she's a lot less nice to Clementine and the rest of the group. Who cares about Tavia? Her role is about as important as all of the 400 Days characters. That whole thing really just felt like filler. Now it's time for our seasonal break. We'll come back with The Walking Dead season two's characters at a later date.